What is going on, everybody? It's the Front, and we're here again with our NXT take, NXT review for Jan February 7, 2018. The first of what would be six tapings from not full sale, but the center stage in Atlanta, Georgia. So we get the Atlanta crowd again. We did see what well, was so we were supposed to have a tag team title rematch between the author, the Undisputed Era, and Sanity. But that didn't happen. We had to wait for that. If that ever is to happen, I don't know. I don't know what happened in the rest of the tapings. We did have Heavy Machinery versus Moss and Sabatelli with a little dissension between Moss and Sabatelli. The Killian Dane, my, my God. This guy, give this guy an NXT championship match. This guy has put on time and time again MVP performances in war games tonight. Anytime you put this guy out there, if you give him uh, the tools to do it, he has the tools to do everything. Big Demo, aka Killian Dane, is could is going to put on a show. We also had Johnny Gargano addressing the full set, not, not the full scope, the NXT universe for the first time since NXT Takeover Philadelphia, and we have a match set up for. I don't think it's next week. They didn't say anything about next week. I think they have too much already put together for next week. Between him and Cian Almas, and we have to wait to see when that's going to happen. So, a pretty decent show for, to start off these new set of tapings, but we do have a long way to go. Before we do get into this, there are two things that I know came out of the, um, out of the tapings because they just people couldn't stop talking about it. Dusty Tag Team Classic is coming back. I do not know who's all in it. I do make a prediction that War Machine will make their debut in the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic. If they do, yay for me. If they don't, we'll see what happens. But I believe it will be War Machine as one of the, I guess it's someone, I guess they were saying it's an eight man to eight team tournament, which is fine. With the fact that it's only done on NXT and not in an actual tournament setting itself, like, you know, the Cruiserweight Classic or the Mae Young Classic or the UK Championship. I'm fine with it. So. I could see un Sanity, Undisputed Era, if the, if the tag team champions are not a part of this tournament, I would like to see them get through this Tusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Tournament, and the winner goes on to face Fish and O'Reilly at NXT TakeOver New Orleans, so that would be, you have the tournament on NXT TV, then you have, like, the, ta the team who won go to TakeOver to take on Fish and O'Reilly, so that gives you... Something for a way to build a number one contender for the tag team champions. Also, another one which it, he's a big name, and there's no way that was gonna I was gonna be able to avoid it without even reading the spoilers. But Ricochet, I don't know when it's going to happen, but this dude makes his debut on NXT. I don't know who he wrestles, but I hear a lot of people coming out of the, out of the tapings was excited and you know everybody talked about it oh my goodness even triple h put a comment and put a um, um picture out there of ricochet being in gorilla position before he's about to go out he's like i'll just leave this here and whatever i am glad they went with ricochet i am i was a little worried because from the time he came to nx to the performance center till he made his debut if they made any like note of him, if they sh when they showed him in the actual crowd at Takeover, whenever they would like say something, talk about him on that on WWE.com, they went with Trevor Ricochet Man. They just like wanted to let you know what his actual name was. So it's nice to know during this taping, whenever it is, he's going to be billed as Ricochet, which is great. So I'm looking forward to when that's going to happen. I do not want to know when, or where, or who he faces, but I cannot wait to see that debut. And a lot of people were also surprised that Ethan Carter the third EC3 was not, I guess, at these tapings at all. So, and they're wondering when's he going to make his debut. I ha honestly think because EC3 was a part of the last set of Impact tapings, I think Triple H is going to hold off having him have his on-screen, like, in a active role debut or in the ring until after those tapings have gone by. I mean, yes, he did show up at at the um, TakeOver Philly, had a backstage um, interview with, I believe, Charlie St. Cloud, but definitely looking forward to when that happens. And we have a lot of NXT to go. We still have another two month and a half before we get to TakeOver Philadelphia, I mean, not Philadelphia, but TakeOver New Orleans, where anything can happen. And one more thing, there was... Talk about Lars Sullivan being absolutely nowhere 
during the last set of tapings, people are worried, oh, is he in trouble? Did he, they cancel his big push? According to Dave Meltzer, he is actually injured and nursing up an injury. So hopefully he'll be back in time for the tapings in March from Full Sail so he could have a match on TakeOver. But if he's not, then I'm fine with it as long as they have a reason. I will, If he is dealing with an injury, I would like for them to have him come on to NXT's TV and have somebody that they want him to feud with after he gets back from injury take him out with a knee injury like a blood pipe to the back of the leg or smashing his foot or something and causing him injury so we so we have a reason why he's gone instead of him just being there maybe they tape something backstage that the crowd in atlanta doesn't get to see but we on nxt tv will get to see only time will tell and we will have to wait for these tapings to fi finish out and the ones up until new orleans in at full sail to finish out before we can really know if they have something planned as in a backstage segment that we don't get to see, that the people in Atlanta didn't get to see, or when we get to March, Full Sail doesn't get to see, but we will get to see on TV. So, enough of that, on to the show. We started off with the Undisputed Era coming out for the tag team match. Originally, last week, we got it was said that Undisputed Era, Barbara Fish, and Kyle Arrival was going to face Eric Young and Alexander Wolf, and... Adam Cole was going to face Killian Dane, which I was actually looking forward to a Killian Dane versus Adam Cole one on one match. Just, that's my opinion. I think those two would have tore the house down on their own. But that didn't happen. Adam Cole and the, uh, the tag team champions were on the ring apron doing their pose before they get in the ring. Sanity comes up from behind and beats them, beats on them a little bit. And so they finally chase them off to the stage. William, William Regal comes out and is like, enough is enough. This is going to end tonight and makes a six-man torna Texas Tornado Tag Team match. They don't say Texas Tornado anymore, but it is a Texas Tornado Tag Team match because Texas Tornado matches is more famous than Texas. That's why they call Texas Tornadoes. But yes, no disqualification, no count out, no DQ, um, six-man tag. Everybody gets to be in the ring. It's going to be hectic, and it was, and we'll get to it when we do. So definitely... Don't know when, if or when Sanity will actually get the rematches. They're just dragging it along. I don't think it's going to be a takeover um, New Orleans. I think Kyle, Kyle, uh, Kyle O'Malley and Bobby Fish will have a new team to go against. And I'm hoping if War Machine is part of this tag team classic, which I'm hoping they are, maybe War Machine wins it by facing off against, um, against AOP in the finals or someone else in the finals. And they go to New Orleans, beat the Undisputed Era, and go on and become tag team champions like I know they can. Heavy Machinery versus Mossim Sabatelli. Tino. This match was interesting because I don't know where this came from, but, Tino, but halfway through this match, you start hearing Tino sucks. Tino sucks from the crowd. And... It really, like, I don't know if it was just him playing up his character, but it really distracted Tino Sabatelli for a second. He's tag, he's, like, he walks over, he gets over to his partner and just slaps him across the chest. Like, they built, like, somehow they went from being this tight-knit tag team to this team, this um, match, they were building dissension between these two. Like, there's really something I don't understand how they went from being this tight-knit tag team to now they're just, like, cracking at the seams, like... Maybe he, Tino doesn't like being told that he sucks by the crowd. Maybe the crowd's getting to his head. I don't know, but it's just really weird to have a guy, like, the team just start to fall apart for no reason. They both, like, Moss comes in, and then he goes for a little bit, and then he walks over to Sabatelli, does the same exact hard slap to him. Match ends with a headbutt by the Doze, which they call him the Doze, so I like calling him the Doze. Tags in Knight, who takes out Moss with a sunset flip off the top rope. I mean, off the um, apron onto the floor. Then an assisted power slam they call the compactor for the three count. Winner is head of machinery. Post match, we see Sabatelli down outside still. Riddick Moss comes walking over. Sabatelli puts his arm, his hand out for Moss to pull him up. Moss shakes his head and backs away. So I don't know exactly where this is going for these two, and it really surprised me. It's like. These two, last time we saw them, were just like this tight knit group, and now they're just like starting to fall apart, like, this would be one thing if, like, the last time they wrestled, maybe a slip-up on accident, but it's like they just rushed to breaking this team up, like, they're getting ready to break this team up, I don't know 
What's going on? It's weird. Johnny Gargano next up with a microphone and he call, wants to call out um, Tomasa Ciampa. Before he does that, he does have a couple thoughts about TakeOver Philadelphia. Johnny says, It's been a hell of a month. I went into Philly the most confident I've ever been. I knew I was going to win that match. I knew I was going to do my best. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. And it sucks. But coming out of here and getting that reaction from you guys, it is very obvious to me. He does get a Johnny Wrestling Champ before he can continue and then he continues. It's obvious to me now that what I earned that night means more than a championship. I earned your respect. Hold it right there, Mr. Gargano. You already had a respect. You've had a respect since tomorrow, before, since, take, since TakeOver Brooklyn at least. For you to say that we've, uh, you've earned a respect, Johnny, you've had a respect for months now. It just went up to another level at TakeOver Philadelphia. So you have had... Most, if not everybody's respect, and in any you did silence. And if there were any doubters in the in the NXT universe of you, you did silence them at Takeover Philadelphia with the hell of a match that you put on. But you have had a respect since since probably a, since. Well, I've known Johnny Gargano, and I've seen Johnny Gargano wrestle since 2005 when it was Cleveland All Pro Wrestling in Cleveland, Ohio. I saw Johnny Gargano. The first time I saw Johnny Gargano was back then. I knew this guy was going to be something. I didn't think it would take this long for him to get to NXT or get to WWE, but things happen and that's how it happens. But this guy has had respect of the WWE and NXT universe for months, if not years. I had the match, my match of a lifetime, and you guys helped pick me up when I was at my lowest and realized who I am. I am Johnny Freakin' Wrestling. Takeover Philly is a night I will never forget as well. As I will never forget, something else I won't forget, a clutch shot to the back. I bit my tongue since Chicago, but Ciampa, I'm coming for you. And he tries to call Ciampa, Tommaso Ciampa out, but in Johnny Cian Almas' music hits, and out comes the champion. And I will say this, as I said back then, the wrong guy won at Philadelphia, proving still that the wrong guy won. It should have been Johnny Gargano. If this, if this storyline, and I'll agree with um, Edge, who had a review of NXT TakeOver when he said, if this does not end up at all with this storyline, having Johnny Gargano win the NXT Championship, whether it be next week, the week after, or six months from now, if this does not see Johnny Gargano be the NXT Champion when it's all said and done, they really miss an ample opportunity to give the fans the biggest, the, to, give, to have the biggest reaction and the biggest like crescendo of a storyline at NXT TakeOver Philadelphia. So, yes, I still say the wrong guy won back then, but we still have ways to go before we see where this is going. Vega grabs the mic and says, you've earned their respect. Who cares? You shouldn't be out here. Alma should be out here cel having a celebration and a parade. But instead, instead of you complaining how you lost, you didn't prove anything other than you being a loser. Chopper had nothing to do with you losing. Alma has beaten you again and again and again. You ain't Johnny Wrestling. You're Johnny Loser. Zelina, and Johnny Gargano ends up saying, Zelina, my favorite part was wrestling there, earning their respect. My second part, favorite part was when my wife came out here and beat, you, beat the hell out of you and sent you on your way. Zelina gets in his face and is shoving him back a little bit, trash talking him, and, and then comes Candice Array, who just hard shoves Zelina Vega until she runs out of the ring. It looked like Johnny Gargano was supposed to attack um, in like... Almost was supposed to attack Johnny Gargano, who was supposed to stop him and attack him back. But something went wrong, and I think almost just slipped because it just looked like a little bit of a botch. They both powder out of the ring. John, Selena Vega says, I'm sick of you. What's it going to take to get rid of you? I'm tired of you. I want you guys gone. Johnny Gargano says, if you want me gone, then give me another shot at the NXT Championship. Vega says, if, if you want another shot, so let me get this straight. If you lose... You have to leave NXT for good. Gargano says, I'll take that. I'll take that bet. If I lose, then I'm gone from NXT and let's just get this on. Candice LeRae, in this, after he says that, is sitting there trying to wonder, what are you thinking, Johnny? If you lose, you're gone. Now, so it's going to happen in this set of tapings, I'm pretty sure. I don't know when. I don't know how many weeks from now in this taping that they're going to do this. But... 
I already know. I, I, I don't even need to read spoilers because it just has that feeling that Tommaso Ciampa is going to screw Johnny Gargano out of his NXT career. How satisfying would it be for, John, for Tommaso Ciampa? The man who turned his back on Johnny Gargano at Chicago, who's had to be out for almost a year to come into this set of tapings and know that he could change the tide of Johnny Gargano's career and screw him out of the NXT Championship, but not only that, but his career. So, I don't know when this is going to happen. It could be, it, they didn't mention next week, but they did mention next week Shayna Baszler and is going to put the title on the line against Ember Moon and then Aleister Black is going to be in the, Atlanta, the center stage arena. So I highly doubt it would be next week. They would have said something about that. I'm pretty sure that having the women's championship on the line and the Aleister Black um, program or something started that they're not going to just say, well, we're just going to plop down this NXT championship match. And we also have the UK championship on the line next week, which I still say should have been in um, be a match at TakeOver, but since it's going to be next week, I highly doubt we're going to have three title matches on an NXT TV show. Just not going to happen. So, I don't know when it's going to happen, but Garner Gano will probably end up getting screwed out of this match, but it's not going to be the end of Gargano. Triple H, I, I have a little bit more, I have more faith in Triple H when it comes to this than I do Vince McMahon. If this storyline wasn't Vince McMahon in Kevin Dunn's hands, it would be bungled and there would be, well, Gargano, like, say this, say this, ha say this, this, everything went down the way it is right now and that Gargano was to lose his, his, um, lose the NXT Championship match against Andrade C. and Almas in the hands of Vince McMahon. He would have Gargano leave that one week, come back the next week, and start messing with the champion. I don't see that happening with this. When Gargano loses this match because of Tommaso Ciampa, he will be gone for a good bit. We will not see him again until probably the full sale tapings, and then he is going to do something. Hopefully, and this is the thing, this all depends on if Tommaso Ciampa will be cleared enough for NXT TakeOver New Orleans. All of this, all of this that they're going with right now has to do if Johnny Gug if Tommaso Ciampa is cleared for New Orleans. Because you know it, when he screws Johnny Gargano out of his title shot, whatever they're going to do this. It could be next week, it could be two weeks, three weeks, four weeks from now. I don't know. I did not read spoilers. But... This is going to lead to something between him and Tommaso Ciampa if Tommaso Ciampa is ready for New Orleans. If they have to wait another two months or three months till June to be able to do this match, I think that's just going to be a little too long. So I don't know what this is going to lead to, but I just know, I just feel that Tommaso Ciampa is going to like be a factor in Johnny Gargano losing his NXT career right now. So... Do I want to see Johnny Gargano win the championship? Yes, I still think he should have at TakeOver. I think they, I still say the wrong guy won, but we'll see where this goes. Bianca Belair versus Jessica Hill is what they said, I'm pretty sure. Match started with Hill putting her hand out for a handshake. Bianca Belair grabs, like, shakes her hand, but, like, but keeps a hold of her. Puts her up in the fireman's carry, like, puts her up in the, um, Argentine backbreaker and just throws her back with a, like, they call it a modified burning hammer, but it's not a burning hammer. Burning hammer, you just throw to the side with a reverse step down a driver and land them straight on their head. This was just her, pull, like, just throwing her over her head. Then she picks her up for what they call the alley-oop, which, okay, I'll take that name. For the three count, Bianca Belair wins in about three minutes, if that. No hair whip either, but when you beat somebody that fast, you don't need the hair whip. Sanity vs. The Undisputed Era, six-man to Texas Tornado tag team match. Alice, they do mention that Alistair Black will be in the building next week. Ember Moon also put on Twitter because they did have a promo with a, a question and question and air about Shayna Baszler saying that Ember Moon is scared of her. She won't ever face her again. She's not a real champion. Next time, I'll rip her arm out. So... 
I guess there was a tweet put out that Ember Moon was like, next week, title on the line, me and you, one more time. So then that's going to be next week. Will Shayna Baszler win the NXT Women's Championship at a takeover show, uh, at a non-takeover show? No. There could, I think this is going to end with a DQ or something like that or count out or something. But you're not going to see, you're not going to see a, like the only titles that I know of, the only title that I know of after the take after in the WWE Network era that has been changed hands on an NX, on a normal NXT show has been the tag team titles a couple times. The new, the NXT championship, I was at, like changed hands on a house show at a special event in Australia or Soccer Japan, one of those two, or Beast in the East. Or takeovers. The women's championship has only ever changed hands on. I'm pretty sure on takeovers. I could be wrong, but I don't see that being. I don't see Hood winning the the match next week. Something's going to happen. I do not know what. And as I said, Alistair, um, Sanity versus Undisputed Era six man tag this tornado match. May I ask, is Nikki Cross uh, have they phased Nikki Cross out of being part of Sanity? Because she hasn't been seen. With or around Sanity in weeks, if not months. The last time I think she was seen with Sanity was during the tag team title match. That Sanity lost their tag team titles. So, I don't know what they're doing with um, Nikki Cross. But I we haven't seen her really being part of Sanity in a good while. Which is okay, I guess. If she want to just put her out on her own. Which she can handle her in, on her own. So... I don't know what's going on with Nikki Cross, but we will see. Anyway, match pretty much started on the floor. You had Sandy in the ring, but the Undisputed Era was pretty much um, begging, like calling them out there. Like most of the match, beginning of the match was just so much of a cluster, it wasn't even funny. But Cole Fish, Cole O'Reilly, Young, and Wolf end up fighting to the, as they call it, the bowels of the center stage area, leaving Fish and G Kenny and Dane, who again, is the MVP of Sanity. If anybody is to break away from Sanity and have a successful career, it is Killian Dane. It has been obvious from War Games to tonight. This guy has put on a show every time he goes out there with these guys. They, when everyone else gets back to the ring, Fish, like Bobby Fish gets out of the ring and starts running up to the stage. Everyone else is fighting over by where they set a table up. He ends up getting grabbed and hit with a forearm from Killing Dane. Killing Dane ends up grabbing Fish and tossing him over the stage onto all four of the other competitors in the match. Pretty crazy move. Again, Killing Dane showing why he's the MVP. Give this guy a championship singles match. He's just he just does it all for sanity in the NXT brand. Dane with a Michinoku driver um, onto Cole, onto um, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly with the sit down spat, um, together. There was like sanity, like it's chaos, but there was a part in this match where it's like Wolf was getting pinned, so Saint Killian Dane hits a senton on top of, I believe it was Kyle O'Reilly, onto Alexander Wolf, too, who was under Kyle O'Reilly, crushing them both of them. Then Adam Cole hits a super kick onto. Killing and Dane going for the pin there, and Ke and Eric Young hits a s an elbow drop onto Adam Cole, also giving dealing damage to Killing and Dane. It's like, geez, Sanity, you like just attacking your own um your own teammates as well. Dane does go outside and tries to do a rolling senton through a table, but misses. Um, but that, Bobby Fish moves out of the way, so Dane goes through the match the the table by himself, putting him out of the match for about two or three minutes. I shoot him error ends up having Alexander Wolf by themselves and they start beating him down. They try to go for a couple finishers, but Wolf fights back. Young comes in and starts swinging a kendo stick on Kyle Fish, Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish until he ends up eating a super kick from from Adam Cole, who hits a nasty looking Oshigoroshi, but only gets a two count. Then Killian Dane gets back in and he just has that angry face on him that you don't want to mess with this guy. He ends up hitting the Ulster Plantation on, I believe it was Bobby um, Bobby Fish, for the three count. And Sanity is your winners. When will we see these guys face off in a tag? When will we see this tag team title match? I do not know. 
do not want complete spoilers down in the comment section below to anybody who would comment. But pretty good showing for the first set of these tapings. They did six, three, and three last Friday and Thursday, um, Thursday and Friday of last week. Like I said, I do know that because it was all over Twitter when it happened. Ricochet and the fact that the Dusty Road Tag Team Classic comes back is coming back, which is nice that they're doing that. Get to see. I really, if they want to do a true Dusty Road Tag Team Classic, I would like to see them do a team a sixteen team tournament, eight from NXT and eight from eight teams from around the world that they can get. Winning team and it's a team. It's the NXT side versus the world the um the independent world side. And then the finals is the team, the winner of the NXT side versus the winner of the world side. And there you go. But, yes, we have a lot to go until we get to, we still have a, we'll still be, we'll be they will be back in full sale in the middle of March. Which I'm sure, hopefully, will be the conclusion in the finals of the NXT, the um, Dusty Road Tag Team Classic. I hope they don't stretch this to NXT TakeOver New Orleans, I'm hoping. And what I think they should do is take the winner of the Dusty Road Tag Team Classic and give them a title shot against Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly when we get to New Orleans. But that is going to be your NXT TakeOver review. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit and follow me on Facebook, on Twitter at The Front. Find me on Twitch.tv slash The Front 8 Hit that bell for notifications so you know when I upload. And also leave a comment on, on, in the section below. Hit that like button or dislike button depending on how you feel. And I will see you guys on Saturday for Unscripted. And you guys have.